Hey there, I know it's been quite a while since I last posted a video here, and first of all, I want to say sorry to everyone who's been waiting for new content, but today, I've got some good news. I've decided to return to making videos about 3D jewelry modeling using Nomad Sculpt. And to kick things off, I want to start with something small but important optimizing my workspace, specifically the part where I work with my tablet in Nomad Sculpt. To be honest, I stopped using this amazing app ever since I stopped recording for the channel. And since then, there have been a lot of updates. So it's time to relearn some things and discover what's new. But before diving into that, let's talk about comfort. I recently got myself a mini keyboard, the Huion Kidal Mini K20. And I wanted to make it as convenient as possible for working in Nomad Sculpt on the iPad. In this video, I'll show how I customized the keyboard, printed icons with a thermal printer, applied them to the keys, and set up the shortcuts to make everything work perfectly for modeling in Nomad Sculpt. I bought this keypad a couple of weeks ago, so I've already had a chance to test it a bit. Nothing serious, just played around and got a feel for how everything works. It came with a sheet of stickers featuring basic icons like brush, save, control, alt, lasso, and so on. There were also some blank black stickers in the pack, so I wrote down my own shortcuts on them using a white marker. Honestly, I think it turned out pretty well. Simple, clear, and practical. As for the keypad itself, I like it. It connects to the iPad via Bluetooth without any issues, and the software is intuitive and easy to use. So overall, I'm almost completely satisfied with it. Still, I wanted the keypad to look more interesting and professional. So I came up with the idea to print custom icons for Nomad Sculpt commands. That's when I unexpectedly came across thermal printers. Without thinking too long, I ordered the Nimbot B18, along with some extra printing supplies. Let's take a quick look at what's inside the box. I flip through the manual to get a better idea of how everything works. Then I open the top cover of the printer. Inside there's already a pre-installed cassette with black ink and a roll of white labels. This comes as the default setup with the printer. In addition to that, I also ordered a separate cassette with white ink and a pack of transparent round labels. These are the ones I'll use to print the custom icons for my keypad. After unboxing, I install the official app for the printer directly on my iPad. Once the installation is done, I turn the printer on and connect it to the iPad via Bluetooth. Everything sets up quickly and easily. I try to figure out the label settings and go ahead with a few test prints. Of course, the very first label I print says Art Chahur and the second one, Subscribe. What else could it be? Now it's time to move on to the real part. I swap the black ink cassette for the white one and switch the label type to the round transparent stickers. The replacement process is super easy and completely intuitive. I prepared all the icons in advance. I simply redrew them and in some cases adapted them slightly, taking into account that the printer only prints in one color. Still, they remained easily recognizable. I might share these icons later, maybe make them available to my Patreon subscribers. I'm planning to launch a Patreon page where I'll share things like this, but that's just an idea for now. We'll see how it goes. At this stage, I'm printing the stickers and applying them to the keyboard. It already looks much cleaner and more professional than before. This keyboard comes with its own software, high on key dial, so I launch it. There's a power button on the side of the keyboard. I press it. The Huion logo starts blinking, which means the keyboard is turned on and ready to connect. I pair it with my iPad via Bluetooth. Everything goes smoothly and quickly. Since I've tested the keyboard before, I already have some of the keys set up. I don't think anyone will have any problems with customization. We select the key we want to reassign, then click Change Hotkey, then click Customization, set the desired number or letter, and click Finish. 
In Nomad Sculpt, go to the interface settings and tap the bindings button. This is where you can finish setting up your keys. I'll speed up the video so as not to drag out the timing. The most interesting part is how I set up the key with the multi-resolution icon. I assign the D key to it. As you might know, the mask icon is mapped to control. So now, by pressing mask plus D, I can increase the resolution level of the model. by pressing Shift plus D, which for me is the combination for smooth plus multi-resolution, I can go down the resolution levels. And by simply pressing the multi-resolution key, I move up the resolution levels. I'm finishing up setting the keys. You can assign brush size to the dial, but I actually prefer to use it for undo and redo. Then I test all the buttons and it looks like everything works perfectly. Overall, I'm really happy with how this keyboard turned out. And when you combine it with a printer like this, it's not just functional, it also adds a bit of style to your workspace. If you're working in Nomad Sculpt 2, I definitely recommend trying out both the keyboard and a label printer for customizing your setup. It really enhances the workflow. If you like the idea, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a custom keyboard like this for yourself. And don't forget to subscribe. There's a lot more interesting stuff coming soon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.